and then um, I think I'll be all right. This week has just been busy. The last few weeks have just been really busy for me. Uh, Got to get back making videos, Danny. Yeah, I know, man. It's oh man. I bet you. I wonder if my connection is going to prevent people from joining the live stream. I hope not. I mean, I you, we have eleven people waiting. We got Mister Chris Barr in the chat. Oh, oh, we're getting some, we're getting some people fumbling now. Okay. Yeah, yeah there we go. All right. There we go. Here, I'll, well, give, I'll well, give it a thumbs up. <laughs> well, folks, if you're catching this live show later, uh, you're watching it on demand. Just to let you know, we're going to go ahead and try to get some show notes posted down below in the description and the comments as well. So you can go ahead and thumb through the topics that we're going to be covering this evening. Right now, we are in the pre-show mode. So if you're joining us live, great. If not, you're watching this. Uh, in the future, we're just doing some banter between me and Jason Bong and also the chat. We'll get started with the show in about, I don't know, 12 minutes. So just hang tight. Awesome. <laughs> hey, how, how's everybody doing today? We've got Chris Barr, I'm the Brown, Lennox 2016 A7S3, possibly in April. We'll see. Damon Hart, <laughs> Pope Rock, Sean McGuire, Chris Bodut, Bodet. Sorry if I'm pronouncing your last name wrong. Uh, how Nan Dang and uh, Rob Sig Sigler Photography. Hey, Rob Sigler. But uh, yeah, um, Sparks actually told me he uh, he mentioned somebody. I guess that's you. That's cool <laughs> that you know Greg Sparks here at our school. Um, nice. Man, that makes the world much much smaller place. Um, Do we have oh. some three degrees of separation going on right now? Is that what's going on, Danny? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I was taking, uh, we were doing the, the group portraits uh, the other day. We were taking the band photo, uh, marching band, and so forth. And the band instructor, he mentioned to me that he's like, hey, man, you've been talking to town on Facebook. And I was like, well, what are we talking about? You know, it's like a big problem. And he said that a friend of his, I guess Rob here, um, actually knows uh, knows our band director, actually saw him in one of the videos. So Nice. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of it's kind of scary. It's kind of scary, kind of weird at the same time when you know when you're when you're doing these you're things like, on YouTube. You're like, oh shoot, pe people, 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 <laughs> people of my people know me. This is this is bad. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely feel you, man. Oh, and then uh, what is it here? Uh, I'm the Brown's getting on my case about not pumping out any videos. I know I'm the Brown. I, know. Brown, you know, I, I caught Danny every morning. It's like, is there a video coming out? Man? A video coming out? <laughs> All the time. All he the never time. responds, but it's cool. <laughs> Jason Vaughn just hitting me up, man. Where's the videos? Where's the videos at? Where, where's the video at, Danny? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's tough. It is tough. I mean, it, I think you guys can notice that I'm at work. I don't know. Hopefully, the quality's better today. Is it potato quality? I don't know. Is hey, it? well, yeah. Welcome back to the uh, Potato Podcast. Oh, it is potato quality? Let me know in the comments. Yeah, I, if I don't it's know. No, so, uh, like uh, LKFX says, <laughs> Danny is in 720p resolution. So, oh, good, good. Finally, I'm glad it's not as bad. But I'm still stuck here at work. So I've had a. I got here at 6 p.m. I've been here since 6 p.m. So uh, very, very. You, very you, long you mean day. 6 a.m. or 6 p.m.? Oh, oh yes, <laughs> 6 a.m. Okay, it's been a long day already. I got here at 6 a.m. So it's been it's oh, been like some time. You're, you're you're going 13 hours right now. 13th hour. I don't know, man. Well, not, that's, 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 not only is your quality, not only is the stream quality better, but it's so much brighter too. You can actually see your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope everyone appreciates it. Um, yes. All right. Yeah, he's right. I mean, Andrew Brown's right. I was pumping up a lot of videos in January of last year. I was just like going, going all out on it. But um, the thing is, I mean. Being a teacher, I've got a lot of other responsibilities, and I've got some students actually competing. I've got a team competing in digital cinema on Saturday. I've got like four, like six teams or so, and then I've got three students competing in photography, and I'm just trying to make sure they're ready to go. I mean, it's like Pokemon, man. You're like, you're like raising your Pokemon to go in and compete. That's the way I look at it. Um, so yeah, he's got some real sure. Pokemon. He's got, he's got Pokemon <laughs> in real life, and he's got you guys, the Digimons, the internet, the internet people <laughs> who needs to learn and who needs to learn and grow as well. Gosh, I don't know how many people would that even get that. Digimon, man, I remember that. They brought it back, but man, we're going. They did bring it back for a little bit, and then uh, I I never followed through with the new stuff. They have the, the stuff was moving. 
they, they have the new movies that are dubbed. Oh. They brought back the, like the live a, like li- like live action or no 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 they they, they there's like a three new animated movies that they finally dubbed over. They're gonna like have it like all across the theater, oh, all across <laughs> the nation. <laughs> Uh, did before I die say, wait, you guys are two different people. <laughs> what the hell? Last week, I got a comment on, on our videos like, are they brothers? <laughs> <laughs> Is it because we're Asian? Is that why? Is that we're Asian. On? We're kind of like, kind of like, I don't want to say we're dark skin Asians. We're not really dark skin Asians. <laughs> Brown skin Asians. Let's, let's just leave it at that. I think yeah. that's good enough. <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 Danny's a uh, f- uh, funny funny looking brother. <laughs> I forgot I forgot what the comment was. Uh, did they did they did it, did they think I was you or reverse or something or what? I think it, I think they always get confused. It's us. I don't know, man. There was at least one for sure. They said your name on my video. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, they said they straight up said Jason in the comments. Like they thought I was you, and I was. It was pretty hilarious, man. <laughs> hasn't, ha- hasn't happened to me yet, thankfully. Oh, too many, too Danny many knows on YouTube. <laughs> Danny knows asking uh, Jason, where can you get one of those hats? Actually, I got this is a new hat. Believe it or not. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa, whoa there's no, there's oh, like no oh. rush here. Whoa! So, yeah, this is like a new cap. I'm, look, we're gonna talk about the Sony event. Oh, damn! That's really the podcast. So that's <laughs> where you would normally get a lot of these free swags. So, damn it, I missed it. I missed I'm it. pretty sure they're like a little bit more um, strict with the free stuff because I think you, you'll definitely get them if you purchase something. But, <laughs> yeah, and not do the loaning stuff that I was doing. <laughs> Oh man, you know it's um, a little little sidebar here. So, uh, so I just sent back the Sony Zeiss thirty five f one point four that I had loaned from Sony Pro Support, and I had extended my request for it. But what ended up happening was, so usually when you want to request something from Pro Support, you'll send them an email and you actually specify exactly what you need. And what ended up happening was, I asked for it, so I, they let me hold on to it for about a week or so. And what was what I ended up doing was, you know, when I had the Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4, for those of you that are following the story on that, I actually extended the request of my Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4 through the Lens Rental website. Now, when I went to my Lens Rental website, the Sony Zeiss 35 1.4 popped up in my account. Now, because I have a Lens Rental account, my Sony stuff that I request to loan actually pops up there. And so I actually did, I extended my loan of the Sony Zeiss 35 1.4 through the website. I didn't know I could do it. I went ahead and did it. And um, I got a little bit of a scathing email from Sony Pro Support letting me know that I, I, I shouldn't have like shouldn't have extended it that long, I guess, on the website. I, I guess I'm not allowed to be doing that. So uh, just an FYI for those of you. So Sony Zeiss 35 1.4 went back today. Man, I really missed that already. You, you probably took someone's time. Oh, I'm, I'm so the sorry. The they're supposed to have with the, the Zeiss 35. Yeah, hopefully no one here was trying to request a Sony Zeiss 35 1.4. I think, I think somebody was. <laughs> oh, shoot. Uh, and now I'm stuck with this little guy here, the Rokinon 35 2.8, which is not bad. It's still, Wait, is it that still new? does the trick. I've had this for a while now. I just haven't gone through a review of it. But um, yeah, I, I'm still using it. It's... Autofocus is kind of slow, but the images are not bad. I mean, I, I think it's useful. Small, compact. But I'm still looking at adding a 35 1.4. I'm just wondering if uh, Sigma's FE line or uh, or a G Master 35 1.4. We'll see what happens with that. Cool. Let's see here. Um, 2005 Beamer J. Nice meeting you at the Sony Pro event. What's the old dude with the white beard, brown skin? You cost me 350 bucks because I had to buy the Peak Design bag that you were sporting <laughs> there. Got the bag strap and today. Got the bag strap, et cetera, today, and I'm loving it. Awesome, man. I just, I just, I was just there just selling stuff to people. <laughs> use my, you're like, use, use my affiliate link. Here's my, uh, here's my business card. <laughs> I'm my affiliate link. <laughs> I should have I should have like the affiliate links printed out on the business card as well. So, bam, hand it out. 
Type this link in. Use the QR code. There you go. Use the QR code. QR code. Wow. Gosh. Thinking ahead. Um, Oh, yeah. What is going on, everybody, in the chat? Let's see here. (laughs) Tag the shooter says, Danny got a new house, man. Uh, This is just work, man. (laughs) Just work. Yeah, I'm glad Tag the Shooter's in the house. I mean, I, I kind of we want to talk about that hot shoe situation. Um, I remember Tag the Shooter's video on that. That was some serious stuff. Uh, let's see. What the heck? I'm the Brown says. Easy way to tell you two apart. Danny's got that radio voice, and Jason Bong's got that comedy giggle. <laughs> wow. That's a good way to put it. That that would that would be a good way to put it. You know what's funny? I had a video at some point, and somebody was like, "Stop doing that!" Ra- so annoying. Or they're like, "You're just trying to do that uh, radio voice." I'm like, "Screw you! Come on!" <laughs> no, that's. I think that's how you talk. <laughs> I mean, I could change how I'm talking, but I mean, it's possible. June and still asking. Everyone still wondering about the A7S3 release date. Jason Bong, I'm sure you know what it is. It's still in that truck that. Landed in my backyard the other day. Yeah, you just, um, you just, take, ago, you right? just obviously haven't taken it out yet. I mean, like that that missing that missing truck from was it uh from NAB or I forgot was it, was it was NAB. Just just take it out and just let us know. Just just please. <laughs> oh man. So I wonder if anyone's people excited. people are saying I'm blurry. Should I refocus myself? That. Oh. Uh, are you using the A7R3 or the the R2? You know what? Lately, I've been I haven't I've been having issue. Um, with my black magic, it would not work with my full frame cameras. It will only work with the 6,500. Oh, like shoot. every time I plug in, the signal doesn't send through to the, to, to the, to the, to the, to the computer. So I'm like, I don't know. Just, just chuck it, man. <laughs> no, just, just, yeah, just, just keep the 6,500, right? It only works with the 6,500. I, okay. I, I don't know. I have no idea why. So it's okay. It's all right though. I mean, it's kind of weird. Whenever I think I use the small HD focus on the A7 or 3, you don't get that full. It doesn't cover the whole. I don't know. Are you shooting at 1080p or in 4K in the camera? Do you switch it? Yeah, usually I like put it into like ABC HD, 1080p, 60, 60p or so whatever, oh, and, what and it would work. But like today, like the 6500 works in 4K. Got it. So none of the none of the other mode none of the modes on the other cameras would work. Nothing was sending through the signal, so. All right. It's weird. <laughs> Let's see here. We're going to start the show very, very soon here. Less than one minute, folks. I should have got my hat. My hat's in the car. It's in my car right now. I should have. Oh, you can make it. Just, you can run to your car. Truck car hand, right? uh, I'm good. <laughs> There's already enough product placement here. <laughs> Got to start charging them. Uh, Man, how's today's show gonna go? No idea. I don't know. The news world is a little slow today, so yeah, it's pretty slow. But hopefully, we can have some banter in between and just kind of have some fun with the chat today. I guess that's kind of be the goal uh, to keep it exciting for this hour. Folks, just want to let you know it is the Monday live show. I'm here with Jason Vong. Jason Vong, say hi. Yeah, what's up? And I'm uh, your host, that one camera guy. I also go by Danny, I guess the best way to put it. And thank you for joining us this evening to check out our crazy show that we try to host every Monday. Uh, today's show is uh, running a little dry, but we're going to try to spice it up as much as we can, especially with help from the chat. Now, we usually go ahead and start our show with hashtag new gear. It's been about a week since our last show on Jason's channel. If you picked up any new gear, please let us know in the comments, and we're going to go and read them off in just a little bit. Um, But before we even get to that, I want to go over some of the things we'll talk about in this week's episode. We're going to go over the Mavic Air very briefly after the official announcement. We covered it kind of heavily in Jason's show, but uh, taking a look at it today after the official announcement, whether or not myself or Jason Vong would be interested in picking it up, as well as you guys. Uh, Jason also had a chance to go visit Sony Pro Support in LA. He's going to kind of detail 
his experience in there. Um, there was, I didn't even know this was happening because I've been so busy, but there was a post on Sony Alpha Rumors about the Sony A9 hot shoe repair going on. We'll talk a little bit about that. There's also the condo trip 2.0 coming up and it does pique my interest, but we'll get into some of the uh, slight challenges of, of making that a very feasible trip. And finally, Adobe is pushing out an update for faster use with your images, but we all know everyone's jumping over to Capture One, but we might as well talk about a Lightroom for those of us that are still using it today. All right, Jason Bong, we are starting off with hashtag new gear. Again, let us know in the comments below what you uh, just recently picked up. Jason, what have you got in the last week? Honestly, not much. I got another standing desk for those of you who follow, who've been following me on Instagram stories. Uh, pretty much the one behind me is a standing desk, but I'm using it as my official computer desk. So I am lacking a YouTube desk that is in front of me to do any sort of like product shots or any overhead shots. So uh, right now I have this giant, ugly brown round table that I want to kind of get rid of. So I already got the desk. It's like sitting right behind the camera right now and I just need to assemble it. So this standing desk is a bit smaller than the one that's in the back. I think the one in the back is about, I think 36 inches in length. And the one that I just got just maybe like 27 inches. It's, it's a, it's a tad bit smaller. It's one leg. It's, it's motor electronic motor. Oh, oh. it's one leg electronic. Um, and, and it, it's powered by electricity. So it'll, it'll, it'll power up. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you guys, you guys, you guys know what's up with the standing desk. Um, so I just need to assemble that put together and that'll be my new desk that will be right in front of the camera and I'll be in between those both standing desks. So those are, that will be the one new thing that I got over the week. Jason, um, is it from the same manufacturer that you picked up the two? Yes. Uh, yeah. So it's from autonomous, uh, they make really affordable standing desk. The one that's right behind me, that's like 36 inches in length, um, is only $300 as opposed to like other ones out there that cost like almost like a thousand dollars for like a standing desk. So it's one of the more affordable ones on the market. Um, the, 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 the cheapest one, that's the second cheapest one that you can probably pick up right away would be Ikea. That's like 500 bucks. So the autonomous one is really good. Plus they also have like a 30 day, like try, try out. So if you don't mm. like it, um, they will, you can return it. No questions asked. You just have to save all your boxes oh, God. and that's, it's, it's troublesome to return. I would imagine, <laughs> but at least there's that little safety where if you don't enjoy using it as a standing desk, you can return it after 30 day or within that 30 day period. So would, really generous would, would you ever go ahead and just like re is it disassemble the whole thing? pack it right back in the box and send it off. Like, would you go it's, through all that trouble? It's, it's so much trouble. Like I tried, like the first time I bought the desk behind me, I saved all the boxes. I saved all the, all the staples and the, and the, and the, those white like tape that I, I don't even know how to describe those like white plastic tape, but the one that goes around the box. Yeah. Um, I saved all that. It was just causing so much mess in my room that I was just like, forget it. You know, like after like two weeks of like leaving game time, my house, I just kind of checked it out. So pretty much after I built the autonomous, this, this new one right here, I'm just going to like throw away the boxes. Cause I, I already, I already, yeah. I already trust the desk that's behind me already. And I, you know, I don't think I have the need to return it. Speaking of, of keeping those boxes, those of you in the chat, how long do you keep your boxes? Now, do you keep oh, your camera boxes, your lens boxes, but do you keep the other kinds of boxes out there for your products? And how long do you keep them? I mean, it's a, it's a very interesting question because it's a really tough call um, when you're holding on to something for a while. And I've even contemplating on getting rid of lens boxes and camera boxes to some degree, but I've just, I've kept them, I've held on to them. So, um, but it's, after a while, I just, I lose them. I don't know. I either, I just ended up tossing them or got put in storage or something. It's funny. It's funny that you mentioned that because, you know, Chinese new year is coming up and my family is having like a massive cleanup around the house. Oh, shoot. So I was having a massive cleanup myself as well. So I threw away a lot of boxes. I, I wanted to take a snap or not a Snapchat, but an Instagram story. It was just like piles and piles and piles and piles of boxes and they're huge boxes boxes too from Adorama, B and H, mostly from Amazon too. Um, but for me, I keep all my Sony 
boxes and lenses. I think someone yeah. in the comment just mentioned that they keep the boxes because of resale value. Mm -hmm. uh, but for things that I know for sure that I'll keep, I don't want to say for life, but for like a very, very long time, I just chuck the box away. So my, I, I think I eventually threw out, threw out my A7R2 box. Um, you threw away your yeah. A7R2 box? Oh, yeah, I think that was a pretty dumb mistake on my end. Um, like now I usually keep like all my Sony boxes, um, but like other stuff, other boxes, maybe like the MacBook Bo the Mac Pro Bo <laughs> Mac MacBook Pro box, <laughs> I would just I would just throw it away. So, oh, but shoot. I don't know. I think do you do you really believe that keeping the camera boxes and the lens boxes actually help with the resale value of your gear? I, this is an open I, I question for everybody. I, I think, yeah, folks in the chat, please let us know. What do you think about that? I really think it's marginal. It's a marginal point. Uh, I think what real, I think for me, I'm not, I'm, I'm not in a need for a really a nice box or anything like that. All I really care about is, did they take care of the screen on the back if I was going to buy a camera? Uh, does the aesthetics on it still look really good? And does the camera still function properly? Whether it has the original box has never really been a big deal. It's nice, but it's not like it changes my perception of it. So I don't know. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is going on here? All right. Well, Danny, did you get anything before we jump into the comments? Man, I've been I hadn't really got anything. I, I picked up a um a Wacom tablet. Um oh. Yeah, That's I picked, something. Yeah, I picked it up. I it, well, the original intent wasn't really for me. I know one of my students are doing uh, they're working on like an animation. They're just drawing a lot, and I just went ahead and picked one up. I figured, I mean, I I need one. I could use one for Photoshop work. So I might as well just let them use it during class for the period that they're in and work on it because I'm like make it a little easier for them. So I just went and ordered one. It's it should have already came to my house. Um, is it yeah. the Intuos Pro or is it the Cintiq? It's an Intuos, I believe. It's not like. I mean, I just looked at the Amazon review, man. Hopefully, it's not too terrible. <laughs> nah, I, well, the Wacom tablets—they're—they're—they're they're, they're really good. I think the the biggest gripe people have with it is just because of the—it's just the price. You know, people are saying like they can mm. think of something cheaper from like a Chinese company, but I, I have them. They're a, good. I spent about hundred bucks on this one, so maybe I didn't spend enough. I don't know. Oh wow, that's hundred bucks. Not bad. Mine's like. Three hundred fifty dollars. Oh shoot, man! Yeah, I better re I better return and get a get a more expensive one. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Use the link down below. <laughs> the link is not even down there. <laughs> oh man! All is right, someone... so let's jump into the chat. <laughs> so all right, what's Alan Ip says he got the twenty eight F two. Tactic Shooter nice. says the new new uh, WD Passport SSD hard drive did a video on YouTube. What's the size on that tag? What's the size on that one? Uh, Dustin Dilworth, new gear, uh, gear tripod head for fine adjustments for moon photography at 1800 millimeters. That's pretty Whoa. sick. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm the round says Arlo Pro 2 to replace my Blink XT. We wanted to get an Arlo. Ooh. Um, Amaris super, is super cool. It hasn't got it, but still thinking about the Sigma R2470 or just go for the 24105 F4. Uh, that's a tough one, man. Tough one. If you're doing a lot of events, let's go for the Sony. If you're just doing like portraits, landscape, background, just, you can adapt the Sigma Art. There you go. Evolution of me, hashtag new gear, 42 and a half millimeter F1.7 portrait lens. Ooh, that's a is that, a, an, is, is that an Olympus? Uh, uh, it's a, it's a micro four thirds lens for sure. I just don't know yeah. which one. Okay. Uh, Joe, Joey Levin says new gear road NT USB. This, this thing right here. And the like Elgato have it now. <laughs> I like how you got yours, and I don't have mine today. Yeah, I, I know. I, I noticed you're using the uh, your uh, lav mic. I'm using like some crazy system here. I've got this lav. It's a it's an XLR based lav, and it's like connecting into this, 
and then it connects to the Zoom H4n. And then I've got this really long XLR cable. Well, no, it goes to the XLR what cable to the, going on? To, the Zoom, <laughs> to the Zoom H4n. And then the Zoom H4n connects to the computer. And that's how I'm getting Why? my audio right now. Why? Just, that just... just for the live show. I went through all that trouble just for the live show. I just feel like you could have just plugged in a USB to the Zoom. That's it. You want me to just, the thing is, if I just go straight here, I don't have like a pop filter for this. So you'll hear a bunch of Got popping. It. So unless you're hearing a lot of popping Got now, it. then I, I do apologize to the viewers. Today. We do, we do, I do hear some shuffling on your end. Oh, with, shoot. With the mic. Yeah. My bad. All right. My bad. There you go. Okay. You're welcome. Back, I'm try. gonna try not to move too much. Okay. Don't All move right. your body. Just, just move <laughs> your head. Uh, let's see. Um, Gerald Williams picked up both the 24105F4, the 85 1.4 G Master, the Sigma 16mm 1.4 for his A7R3, and the Office 6500, and everyone hates Gerald. Now. Okay, moving on. All right. <laughs> we hate you. Uh, I, I'm sorry if I can't, I can't pronounce your username. CAC2. Uh, new gear, A7R3, with the F2.8 1635G Master in love with both. Very nice. And we also hate Keck 2 now. Great. Now, that's a great combo, by the way. That's sweet. Really yeah. digging that. Alan If, uh, new gear, Sony, yeah. <laughs> Sony remote recommended by Jason, but my A7R3 with a small rig cage seems to be not working well with the remote, or did I need to connect the remote, or just turn on the remote from the camera? Um... Uh, well, it should be turned on regardless, but yeah, I, I do have issues with the um, the remote working with the cage. So I think it's because of how it's designed. Um, it blocks the signal. Is it, is it, does it use infrared? I don't know how this works. I you believe know the it's remote. Infrared. Uses, yeah, it's, it's infrared, infrared, right? So I think the cage blocks that receiver on your camera for the remote. So. Is it like does That's it block like does it block like this little dot here? Is that why? Yeah, probably. If it does. Ooh. Yeah, usually usually when there's a cage, it just it, it blocks it. So I can't I wouldn't be able to use it myself either. All right. Uh Troy X says new gear use A72 for 750 first full frame camera. Very oh nice. shoot. Nice. Evolution I... of me just one. Oh sorry, go ahead. Oh, uh, I, I got to get rid of mine. I still have my A7 II. Haven't used it much. Need to put on the market. Uh, anyone in for an A7 II? It'll be on <laughs> eBay tonight. Evolution uh, of Aegis 1250 from Fantasy b -ball. Uh He's going to treat us out to dinner. Thank oh, you, nice. Evolution of Aegis. <laughs> Jean-Louis Louis Imperial. Hashtag New Gear. Rotolite Neo 1 in a 220 centimeter Semi centimeter <laughs> New York heavy duty stainless steel light stand. So Gerald Williams says uh, he wants us to hate hate him more. Uh, he's got a, a battery grip for the <laughs> R3 and the A9. Uh, has a remote interval intervalometer timer function and it's two hundred dollars less than Sony script. Sweet. Nice report back. Report back on how those battery grip works. Yeah, would love to know. Evolution to me says I always keep the boxes for resale later. I know we've been talking about that topic there. Right, so keep boxes. Uh, Adrian says he will keep it forever until he sells them. Dave sincere says he keeps all the boxes. Chris says he covers shipping boxes. I have a television box from 50. Oh my goodness, man! Trash Wait, what? <laughs> okay, TV boxes I'll throw away. Those are those are those take up way too much space. Oh man, I still have my iMac box. <laughs> Zed Pro, what's up? Tune in. Keep them all. Keep them all electronics. I'm the Brown says it's funny you just said that about boxes. I just moved a bunch of boxes out of my office to my garage this weekend. I keep boxes until I know I can't resell the product. Nice. <laughs> I mean, like it wouldn't it wouldn't deter me from buying used gear if there's no boxes. I mean, it would be nice, but it won't stop me from buying it. I don't know. I just bubble wrap the crap out of the stuff that I sell. You know, when I got to mm. sell something, I do wrap, wrap, and then whatever I got from shipping from other stuff, I just pack it with peanuts or whatever. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you just don't want something breaking on delivery, man. Speaking sometimes, of that, yeah. Go ahead, man. So, so, sometimes I just keep 
boxes, shipping boxes, just because like I know I'm gonna I'm about to sell something soon, so it's nice to have a box. But when I but when I sold something and I don't have a box, that's that's troublesome. <laughs> do you ever do the request from uh, USPS because you can actually just request a set of boxes from from the USPS for free? Oh, but the thing is, like I think they also like charge you right because like mm -mm. it's like a pro like well you, they'll give you the box but they'll charge you for that shipping nope i don't think so it's free really i the, think the priority free. mailboxes yeah somebody in the comments confirmed that because um you can request any size that you need just see how many you need and then just put the address and you got it i'm about to sell a bunch of stuff now. <laughs> actually no, no, no joke i actually have a box sitting outside behind my camera right now and i need to take some photos of some of the gear that i need to get rid of oh oh jason what do you, you want to reveal what you're selling or keep it on the down uh i'm selling i'm selling the crane m oh i'm selling the yeti the yeti mic because i already have this one to replace it i forgot what else i don't know r3 <laughs> yeah, it's only the seventh R three. Um, okay, I didn't uh, I didn't drop it by the way, so it's brand new condition. <laughs> 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 uh, oh shoot! Has have you ever like ordered something that was broken? Have I ordered something that you know what? Maybe, but nothing too catastrophic. I did order a lens, and this person, for whatever reason, shipped it in one of those like little yellow envelopes. Yeah, and I and I just cringed so hard. The box was damaged. The lens was fine. It was a cheap lens too, so I didn't really care about it. But that was how. That was probably the worst way to receive something. Aside Gosh. from that, um, nothing. Nothing came damaged. I think the only thing for me was when I ordered a Makey lens. It was a twelve millimeter f two. I think I meant two point eight. I think I mentioned this before, but when it shipped, there was like nothing keeping the lens from moving around. And so the lens was moving around and the cap was loose and it actually scratched the actual lens itself, the actual front element. And me being lazy about it, I never sent it back through Amazon. So I still have that lens till this day. How would you, how would you do that, man? Why would you do that? I don't know, man. It still works fine. It's okay. <laughs> All right, Alex Sandova dropping ten dollars. Who's going to shoot the supermoon and lunar eclipse Tuesday night and Wednesday morning? Oh shoot, I don't have is, stuff ready for that. Damn is it. that is that is that to tomorrow night? I I think so. Yes, or no, or, or Tuesday Wednesday time frame. I think tomorrow night. Let us know. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Alex, for the ten dollars. Really appreciate it, man. All right, AB positive bulldogs hashtag arbitrage. Sweet, we had that as an ongoing joke last year. Glad they still got that. <laughs> Keep it up for twenty eighteen. Yeah, you know, I, I really got to sell some stuff, man. Let's do it. Twenty eighteen, the everything. year, the, the year of garage sale. Imagine, imagine you had to sell everything and just keep one lens and one camera body. That's it. You had no choice. Couldn't do anything else. What would it be? We've asked this before, but now that you have more lens options, what would you keep? Oh, no. <laughs> By the way, I've been trying to stall, as you can tell, from our actual regular program scheduled today, just to keep the fun going on on the live show. So for those of you trying to get to the news topics, please don't hate us, OK? So, yeah, we're, so. we're terribly sorry. I mean, like, it's a, it's a slow <laughs> week in it's, the news world. It's so it's really dull. I'm just trying to liven it up a bit while while I'm stuck this here. So this is why Danny's talking about boxes. Yeah. Like who cares? Man? <laughs> a live show just on boxes, guys. Come on now. It's a serious life decision when you need to throw away boxes. It is. It's some serious stuff. Which which apparently most most of you guys actually keep all your boxes anyway. So. <laughs> all right. Zed Pro says he still has all a closet full of boxes. Um, boxes. Tag the shooter still holding on to his Sony boxes. Bob Nolan sold some stuff. People be asking for lens uh, for the actual boxes. So the Makey grips, uh, they're saying ships very soon. Jason, are you interested? In, you're not really into the a grip, right? 
I, I can see how they're super helpful when you're shooting portraits, especially when you're shooting in that portrait orientation as well. Um, that's something like I, uh, that, that, that I was having. Cause, I, cause like during the, the Sony, the whole Sony pro support day, like we were like doing yeah. a little bit of portraits too. And then I'm just like, kind of like trying to take portrait photos like this. And I'm just like, man, you know, having a grip would be su super helpful, but you need one of these. There we go. You need one I of do. these. I do, but I just can't justify like blowing three hundred dollars for one. So it's nice. I mean, you got that <clears throat> that one thirty five bought it. I mean, you know, it's just another few hundred yeah. dollars. For <laughs> oh, you know, you know. But it's just like I don't know the, the battery itself. Like I would, yeah, I wouldn't get it for the battery purpose. Yeah, and I think a lot of people would probably agree. Like they would probably get it for that that grip. Um, just cause like, you know, people's pinky would like go over the camera or something like that. So they'll probably get the grip for the actual grip purpose, but for battery life extension, it's not very necessary with, especially with the A7R3 and the A9. Uh, I gotta say functionality wise, it's, it's so awesome having, especially if you shoot a lot of like portrait mode stuff, if you're doing portraits or, uh, you shoot sports and you got to shoot in a portrait orientation, it gets, it gets kind of, especially if you have heavier lenses. And then you're like swinging around your camera and you're doing this half the time. It, it, it weighs it down a little bit. And for yeah. me, I have this pinky hanging on the side. It kind of frustrates me. So having this grip comes in, comes in handy. So I'm just hoping the third party grip's good. Espe and especially, especially when you want to shoot in that orientation as well. It's like, if you're trying to shoot like this, you know, like, uh, I, I feel like I feel like my my horizon is always off when I try to shoot like that. So I think having that better position yeah. would give you that better lines, the straight lines and stuff. So it, it does add to the bulk. I mean, it really does add to the bulk of the setup. But the times when I know I'm going to be shooting in that la that mode a lot, I like having the grip. It just makes things easier. It's kind of funny. I brought it up with Manny before because Manny doesn't use a battery grip and he shoots portraits a lot. And so it's interesting uh, for folks who shoot a lot of portraits and, uh, and don't use a, a battery grip. So nice. Yeah. All right, man. I'm lucky I have small hands. So my pinky actually does cover the camera grip. All right. Let's see here. Dave Sincere, new gear, bought new video editing software, Cyberlink PowerDirector 16 Ultimate. 60 bucks. I've heard of that. Nice. <laughs> Taylor Wilson, new gear, kind of converted my A6000 to infrared by Kalari Vision. Oh. Ooh. Nice. The only person that I know that has an infrared camera would be Philip Bloom. <laughs> For those of you that are dropping questions, we will tackle some of these questions towards the end of the show. So just go ahead and bring those questions back up towards the end um, as we get closer, about another 20 minutes or so, and we can go ahead and jump in and tackle those questions you guys want to see answered. Um, let's see. Jason, if you see anything, go for it, man, if you see any new gear stuff. Um, no, nah, man, I think, I think we can jump into the news. <laughs> we time answering questions. Dang it, I was trying to stall for the longest time, man. Okay. Oh, good, man. I mean, like, there's questions. All right. Yeah, we'll jump to the questions later. I just want to hang out with the chat. This makes me feel more comfortable. All right. Yeah. So our first topic we're going to look at right now is the Mavic Air and the official announcement. We talked about it with the leaked rumors um, on Jason's channel last Monday. And now we actually have the official announcement. So I think... We assume, we thought there was going to be 4K 60p. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jason. Was that one of the possible? Yeah, yeah. right. There's a potential for 4K 60p. We don't have it in this model. We do get 1080p. It was, it was too good to be true. It was too good to be true. <laughs> 120 frames per second. Um, it does have better sensors to avoid obstacles more. It has a longer range, I think, of 4.3 miles with the with the actual radio. Uh, remote versus two and a half on the Mavic Pro. It's 41% 41% lighter. Uh, it has smart capture modes now. I've never used mine on the Mavic Pro. I don't know, Jason, if you've ever used any of those. And the price, $799. That's what it's retailing for currently. Jason Vong, Mavic Air, would would you ever... And those of you in the chat, let us know too, now that it's officially announced, 
Are you looking to add a, a drone to your arsenal? Or if you have the Mavic Pro, would you consider switching it out for the Mavic Air based on the features you've seen thus far? Jason, would you? what are your thoughts on this Mavic Air? Yeah, it's like watching Tony Northrup's video. He was kind of, he gave like a really, um, a really good video comparison between the Spark and the Mavic Pro and the Mavic Air, and I think he put he, I think he put it together really nicely that it's not something that we can you know Mavic current Mavic Pro users should jump on right away. There could be a potential Mavic Pro two, just just in the horizon. Um, so there's not a, a huge substantial upgrade to like warrant this. I, I think like um, he says the Mavic Air is only like a 21 minute flight time anyways, right? So that's confirmed. Yeah. That was also in the rumored as well. So um, it's not the biggest deal. I think like if you already know what you're doing, you can you can fully get the shots that you need within that 21 minute um, time frame. Um, an improvement on the Mavic Air is that I don't think you need to focus anymore. I think like everything is in focus. Oh, wow. The camera wise, you don't have to tap the focus. That's a big issue that I had with the uh, Mavic Pro. Like sometimes I would forget to tap on my screen so it doesn't autofocus to whatever it is I'm shooting, which yeah, whereas I the Mavic see, Air. Yeah. Whereas the Mavic Air, you know, you don't have to kind of worry about that anymore. So basically but, it's a lot smarter with regards to getting that focus down a lot initially. Yeah. Yeah. So there is minor improvements with the air, but not enough for me to jump over. But I think a lot of, you know, a lot of our friends, they 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 are getting the Mavic Air, like Zed Pro Media. He, oh. he's he's picking one up so just the people around me makes me want to pick one up but i know like from you know financially i probably wouldn't i, I probably wouldn't do I, I would probably wait for the mavic pro 2 myself you know i gotta ask this now you know how we obviously have multiple cameras um you know you got like you have an a6500 an a7 or three um do you have any other cameras you saw the a6 the other ones out there <laughs> jason 6000 rx105 uh-huh 6500 r2 r3 <laughs> when you don't know what you still have i don't so know great. dude I, i've loaned out my 6000 to a friend haven't seen that <laughs> camera in like three months uh man i've got way too many cameras on on deck um but have you ever seen have you would you ever consider actually owning two drones or is it just kind of odd you know what i mean i i as a tool, right? As a, having like maybe two or three cameras, you can do like a multi-cam setup or if you're shooting something, but the idea of ever having two drones. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's not far-fetched. I mean, like I think people own like a Phantom 4 and they also have a Mavic, you know, they would probably take out the Phantom 4 Pro or Advance if they wanted that better image quality of their shooting at night or, you know, um, they would have the Pro for like traveling or for like, you know, just trying to trying to keep um, a low a low a smaller footprint when they're out traveling. So it's not far fetched to have two drones. I, I would say they would have to be like that kind of combination, like uh, a Phantom Four and a Mavic. You know, something that's mm -hmm. small and lightweight that they, could, they, they that they can take around. Yeah, I just I I don't know. I just couldn't see myself having two but drones. I, but I don't. I mean, like, yeah, you probably would need two Mavic Pro or like a Mavic Pro and a Mavic Air, something that's like too similar. You know. Yeah, I get you. Maybe as a backup, you know, or add, throw in a spark in case something happens to your your main drone if you're shooting something. Mm -hmm. I don't know, well, but um, I guess I guess from if you're like if you are like dedicated like dedicated drone pilot, I, I guess like if like for for me at a wedding, I wouldn't have two drones. I I, I wouldn't see that as something that's necessary unless the client specifically asks for it. But <laughs> we've always been really rocking like one drone. Yeah, it is really the individual that it matters for. Obviously, if you're an enthusiast for drones, it makes, I mean, I could see someone doing that, but I don't know. I would just wonder for those of you in the chat that are listening in, like, would do you have two drones right now? Would you have a third? I, I don't know. I mean, uh, but that goes along the same lines as the Mavic Air. It's still similar to the Mavic Pro. Uh, if you already have a Mavic Pro, you're, I don't know. I, I wouldn't be inclined to get a Mavic Air. So, unless it was vice versa, reversed. So, but yeah. Cool. Let's see oh, here. Oh, um, Chris Cheek says the Ma the uh, Mavic Air looks awesome. And Gerald Williams says he wants to add a drone looking at the Mavic Pro and the Mavic Air. Let us know which one you decide to get. John Louis uh, Imperial says Mavic Air looks fantastic, but hard to fly with the law, the drone laws in Canada. Ouch. Oh, yeah. I feel like they're a lot stricter now. Yeah. Everywhere. 
in fact, not just Canada, but everywhere. Um, Mavic Pro footage still beats Mavic Air, according to Photomiac, in all the comparisons that I've seen. Okay. Yeah. Um, David Oster says the Mavic Air is too noisy. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, Adrian says, I do hate the tap focus as well. Um, Tag Shooter says, yes, two drones for backup. If you're doing a gig and it breaks, you need to have a backup camera. Yeah, totally get that. Gerald Williams uh, confirming on the noisiness and also that the Mavic Air, they've seen that it's only, some, at some time, it's claimed to do 21 minutes. They've seen 16 minutes in cases. Wow. Chris Coffin says he has the P4P, does not need another drone. <laughs> awesome. Very cool. Okay. Hopefully the Mavic Pro Chew is coming soon. That's probably be something that I don't. I mean, I don't mind if it as long as the Mavic Pro Two keeps the same size as the Mavic Pro. It doesn't have to be smaller for me. I think the Mavic Pro is the perfect size. It's like Mavic Pro Two. Mount your micro four thirds lenses on it. What the heck? Yes, please, please. <laughs> mount your Sony. Unfortunately, I don't have any. Mount your Sony E mount lenses on your Mavic Pro Two. Sony Sony APS-C lenses. Oh, we laugh now, but someday, man, that that is someday. You know, there's um, I think, ah, oh, gosh, I forgot what company. Um, I forgot what the company was, but at CES, I did see, um, this drone carrying an A7R. Oh wow! So like, this is this obviously is marketed for like businesses to do. I guess like, um, what is it? Land surveying. I don't I don't know. It's just it's just it's just for companies. So the idea is to attach something like a A7R 32 36 megapixel camera just for like high quality image, just getting that drone in the air, that camera in the air, just to like take some high quality photos for like business and like science purposes. But it's pretty cool. Nice. Yeah. I mean, but I'm guessing those things are expensive, right? They're pretty pricey. Yeah, they're just not for consumers. They're I, I talked to them. I was like, this is cool. I need this for weddings. I use the Sony cameras. They're like, yeah, I don't think you can afford it. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, thanks. Uh, I mean, I still remember when gimbals were very expensive, when they had those high-end gimbals that first came out, and now you have them in such small form factors, the cameras got smaller. So this idea, I mean... I'm sure the quality will obviously improve in the next few years and in, in, in leaps and bounds. So, um, yeah. Well, I mean, like, I'm hoping the Mavic Pro 2 will have that one inch sensor, oh, like wow. the Phantom 4. I just yeah. hope it just gets stripped down to the Mavic Pro line. Then, yeah. We can always stream. We can always stream. All right. Moving yeah, on to our. Soon, man. <laughs> coming soon. Uh, moving on to our next topic here. Couldn't find a good segue on that, but uh, Jason Vong actually got to attend a Sony support pro, Sony Pro support day. Maybe some of you in the chat got a chance to check it out. Um, yeah. Jason Vong, uh, since you had a chance to check it out, please go ahead and, and uh, fill us in what that was all about. I don't know. So for those of you that's been like in this live show, Danny and I have always talked about these sort of like Sony events that are happening in Los Angeles. Um, I think they usually happen like around across the country too. Don't quote me on it, but as far as we know, they happen mostly in LA, and it's pretty cool. It's a free event. Usually happens the entire day, and they would get like the Sony artisans and the Sony collectives, um, and they come out and they sort of like show you guys their workflow, how they take the photos, how they capture the videos. Um, you know, Jason Lanier would be there, Scott Robert Lim teaching you guys portraits. Uh, lighting, uh, posing, and all that stuff. So, like, just like really free, basic workshop that's offered to the public, and it usually happens at like camera stores. And um, last Thursday, they had it at their Sony Pro Support location, which is um, yeah, it's it's in LA, and the space is much bigger mm -hmm. than if you guys have, have ever attended this like Sammy's. Um, so, space is bigger, ample amount of parking, and um, it was pretty much like a sneak peek last Thursday because they want to show off what they can do, like what sort of classes or like what sort of workshops are available, um, get to meet like the Sony pro support team, Sony team as well, the Sony alpha team as well. So they're going to expand it over time. You know, they're going to have like a studio area for like, they're going to have lights 
um, I guess for yes to test out, to try or to have like workshops and classes. They'll have a theater room with like Sony Bravia TVs for you guys to like look at 4K videos or watch Sony picture movies. They'll have a gear area, obviously, for you guys to like test out new gear. Um, they'll also have like a color grading room that you can like learn how to like color grade footage, S log two footage or like, um, guess like use capture one to edit photos like a whole bunch of stuff so there's going to be this facility will be improved over time um but on thursday there was like three sony um artisans that were sort of like giving free workshops there was uh stan muniz who was uh is a surf um i would say like a surf outdoor photographer and uh, he was just showing his workflow on how, to, how he shoots his photos and then there was scott robert lim who was showing how to shoot with like basic flash, basic um, speed light flashes. And there was Mike Cologne who was showing you guys, uh, showing us how to shoot with like the pro photo um, strobes and how he would like shoot celebrity portraits and fashion and all that stuff. So it was pretty cool. I had a lot of great time. I met like a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, you guys, the subscribers and the uh, Sony pro support team. So it's, it's pretty cool where they're really taking with this and you know, um, just seeing, just attending all these Sony events for like past year and a half, you know, this has, has, got, has grown so big, you know, there's like at least a hundred some people there. And I, and I think there are going to be a lot more people coming. That's pretty awesome. Um, when you went there, did you feel like the facility was already complete or you just meant that there was a lot, there's a lot of space to develop more, uh, rooms. All right. For all these yeah. Different yeah, I should have been more clear on that. So these areas are still in development right now. So there's a space for those area that I was talking about, like studio, theater. They're all very like bare bone and basic right now. But over time, I guess by next year, we'll see like we'll see the facility more developed. I think that's great. Uh, I wonder, though, do you think that they might start steering their events away from the camera stores and keep them primarily at that venue you know i i would think so like maybe not all the time because i'm pretty sure they would want people who are coming in i was gonna say strays mm -hmm. <laughs> that's probably the wrong term to use but like people who were who, who who weren't expecting a sony event to just show up and like maybe like get some get some information i i think they'll still have some events at like sammy's but this particular Sony Pro Support event was partnered with Sammy. So Sammy's was there mm. with like cameras uh, in case anybody wanted to trade in their cameras or lenses, they can get some new ones while they were at the Pro Support day. Oh, okay. So so Sammy's was there. Yeah, Sammy's was there. So this, okay. it was a, it, it was in conjunction with Sammy's because when you register the event, you would go through Sammy's website anyways. I think that's pretty cool. I, I, I mean, nothing against the Sammy's location, but it, I mean, it's really difficult. To, <laughs> there's a lot of traffic to deal with and parking. Um, but parking would got, be the biggest thing. Yeah. Yeah. If you've got a really nice space and venue and location and, and lots of stuff to like move around, um, I think that's a that's a home run. And it, the vendors like Sammy's wants to go there and bring their their stuff. I think that works great. Yeah, I think I think, so. I think so too. Um, yeah, nothing against Sammy's They're, They, they have some great spots. Yeah. I love the LA location, the LA location. They had like a really good presentation area. The one in Pasadena though, it was just like, they have a presentation room, but people who don't know about the event would miss it. Yeah. You know? So, but it's good that they have a dedicated area for these types of events. Again, there's just like so much parking. It's, it's a, it's a breeze to find parking that day. So thank goodness. <laughs> that is, that's good. But. I just wanted to ask, did he talk about the repair? Is it a repair facility now? Or like, what is it? Yes, yes. So the the newest thing that got added that day was the repair. Like they have like technicians on site now. As before, um, it was only like, you know, getting your sensors clean or like dropping off your camera if you need to send it out to repair. But now they actually have technicians working at Sony Pro Support in the, loca in the LA location. So your cameras can get fixed on the spot without having the need to send to like a different location for fixing. So I'm hoping that since I'm in California as well, but not in that area that I can just, I guess if I send up, send stuff in, I can send it directly to the LA facility and I have to send this like somewhere far away. I'm hoping it ends up being the case. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I, I, I can't believe I was there like the whole day, man. Oh man, 
I was there for like from 12 to 7. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So it was like, I'd say from 12 to 5 o'clock, it's when they have all the presentations and the free workshops. And then from 5 to 7, there's like um, um, a happy hour. So I guess you can like mingle with like other photographers and obviously the artisans that are there. And at the start of the chat, people were asking, where do you guys get the hats? Where do you guys get the t-shirts? The events, man. The events is where it's at. So... Nice. Yeah, they, yeah, usually they'll do like free cleanings at these events. They'll have hats, they'll have like microfiber cloth. Um, yeah, so if you purchase a camera, you'll probably get like more swags too, maybe even a t shirt. <laughs> maybe show up, maybe a microfiber cloth. No, that's cool, man. I'm glad they have a place now there. Uh, definitely have to check it out. So, was it that it was, was it an official opening? Like, what, what did you consider it? Yeah, I think they already had like an opening beforehand. I wouldn't say it's an opening. Okay. It's just more like it, it may have been like the second or third event there. I'm not I'm not too sure. All right. Speaking of getting repairs done, moving on to our next topic here. So this topic's uh, all on you, man. <laughs> I don't have an A9. <laughs> here's my here's my A9 if I had one. <laughs> you know you want one. Um Speaking of repairs, right? I didn't even know this was going on, so uh, I hadn't checked Sony Alpha Rumors for a few days, and then I checked it out uh, today, and I, and I didn't even know there was actually kind of like a recall going on for the Sony A9 of all cameras, right? Uh, not for overheating, of course, but um, but actually because of the hot shoe on the Sony A9, apparently there is a problem with it um, breaking, um, of all things. And I have not had any issues with my unit, and I've um, I have a flash around here. Yeah, and I've got this Godox TT Godox, or I'm not saying it right, but I haven't I had any issues. I've, I've Godox. I've used it uh, for a couple times in some events, and I haven't had any problems with it. It feels very secure, but apparently there are some affected serial numbers. Uh, you might want to go check out their main website or Sony Alpha Rumors website for their post. Um, on the affected units that do need to get a replacement for the hot shoe or some correction done. So I guess that's what I was wondering. Could you technically bring this in to the Sony Pro Support in LA and they would, would they take care of it for you on the spot? And that's what I'm wondering. Is that something they'll do, Jason? Probably. <laughs> I mean, like it, it depends on like, you know. I guess I I'll, just have, to, I'll just have to email them. I, yeah, just email them. I can't I can't speak for them. <laughs> I wish I can, but you know, I just know they have a repair technician on site. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh you know, um is, is Tag still in the in the chat here? Yeah, I remember he's, he's still on. Yeah, I remember this and I if Tag could just kind of fill us in on what happened there, but Tag the shooter, I remember his video he posted about the A9 and he was gonna go have a shoot. Um and his he showed on his video that his hot shoe actually broke off on his A9. And I think people were saying that he wasn't using it properly or he was like over tightening his, hot, um, his, his thing. That's weird. Uh, yeah, they were, I guess they were putting blame on tag the shooter. I didn't know what he was doing. I was like, you guys are crazy. And I guess now vindicated in this point that, that Sony's acknowledging there's actual problem with their actual hot shoe. Um, so I'm just glad that they're actually addressing that problem. And I did check my serial number, and my unit is actually affected by it. So I will uh, check in with Pro Support and see what they advise. So if anyone's in the chat that has an A9, uh, whether or not you've gotten the ball rolling on that process, would love to know if, uh, if you're you, doing that. Or if you but, didn't know, now you know. <laughs> yeah, if you didn't know about this whole hot shoe thing. I, I mean, why not, right? I just got to find a time to do it when I'm, when I'm not using the camera. So, but and, and I got to say, a... I got I to say, Danny, like the stuff, the stuff that we're mentioning on the show is very helpful to like people, to like the folks out there, because like really? I've, I've gotten like feedback at the Sony, um, at the Sony Pro Support Day event thing, and people are like, yeah, I only know about this event because I heard about it from from one of your videos, or like, you know. And more and more people were like, yeah, you know, I didn't know about the free SD card until like you and Danny talked about it on the live show. So cool. I think people people, I, people do appreciate, you know, like knowing about these, like, you know, for instance, this this whole Sony A9 hot shoe repair thing. I think like people wouldn't know unless we brought it up. So 
<laughs> but I'm sure everyone sold their A9s for the for the A7 R3, so they don't have that problem anymore. But uh, well, for the for the one <laughs> two people that still have their A9, you're welcome. I wonder if it's just all the A9s, man. But I don't Maybe know. Maybe the initial batch, probably. Tag, are you going to send yours in? Did you check the? Did you check your serial number? Yeah, he said he got it replaced. Oh, what the heck? They contacted David Oster. They haven't contacted me. They just sent me a, an email about me. They're like that one lens. camera guy. No, <laughs> no, just just let it be. We don't let's want not, any more from him. <laughs> You're like, let's not mention it. We just don't need any more coverage on this. Let's just let it go down and slide through. <laughs> yeah, let's just let's just hope that one camera guy doesn't see this. Oh man. Causing all sort of ruckus. <laughs> Dave since you're like damn hot shoe brakes oh man you know I'm looking at the a7 or three I don't I mean whether it's structural it looks exactly the same I wonder if if the a7 or three might potentially have a problem in the future so uh, be on the lookout for that for a, lo a loose hot shoe so I'm, I'm gonna put a prediction on right now it's gonna be the movie record button on the a7 or three that needs to be replaced oh why why would you say that are you, are you getting a bad feeling no, because <laughs> because I'm just pressing. I'm just like, okay, it's not stopping recording. I have to press it again. You know, um, I'm pushing it now. It feels like it's. It doesn't feel as good as the A9. This one feels as if you push it, it might get stuck. That's the impression I get. I don't know about you, but that's the feeling I get on my A7 or three. A9, still better. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that right now, just to justify Damn. the A9. Damn. <laughs> Stop it. I don't need the A9. I don't need to buy one. Uh, Tag the Shooter says, yeah, my Sony was replaced, but it also was within that serial number. Ser serial number? Serial number. That's your number. <laughs> I'm also slurring my words. Oh, man. Mad fans are getting on my case about saying actual too much. Damn it. Okay. Actual. Actually actual. Actual. I'll try. I'll try. Thanks for reminding me. I got to use some different vocabulary terms, different words. All right. We got to move on. We got to move on. Yes. All right. We're going to go and hammer out the last couple of things. Um, did you know that Sony, speaking of Sony, <laughs> as whole things here, uh, Sony is having something called the Sony Alpha Condo Trip 2.0. Now, they held this, I believe, last year. Um, but this year, I think it's more available to the public now. I don't think it was as available or uh, open to the public. But this time it is, and it goes from May 9th to the 12th. It's four day, three nights. There's about 20 interactive classes and workshops. Uh, I think it's being held in Monterey in California, Big Sur Coastline. I think that's what the note said. But um, it does come at a price, at an interesting price point. And whether or not it's worth for you, uh, the cost of the actual trip itself is going to average two grand uh, if you get a double room and board, and it's $2,300 if you get a single room. So um, this trip has actually kind of piqued my interest. I'd love to be able to go to this and and, and check it, try out these different classes, meet all these different people. But two grand is a really steep price to pay, but I think it could be worth it if you are in the Sony ecosystem and you're looking for uh, some more shooting opportunities. Jason, what are your thoughts on this particular event, and uh, would you be interested in attending? Yes, but I probably don't have the money to go. <laughs> it's tough. But, uh, it's tough. It's it is. Um, but for those of you who can afford it, or like, or at least thinking about it, like Danny, I mean, like they'll they'll make their two thousand dollars worth it. I mean, like they'll probably bundle with like a think tank bag that's valued over over five hundred dollars or something. So. I mean, like they're not. I'm not saying they will have something like that. You know, I'm just saying, like Jason, Jason Vaughn from, knows. Jason Vaughn knows from, something. Just, I mean, like just from what I like seen before, like they have something. Like they didn't have specifically the condo trip, but they have like a Cuba trip or like some sort of like very similar types of event trips where yeah. you pay like like what seems to be an absurd amount of money. But what comes with it is like maybe like a Sony jacket or like a Think Tank bag or you know. There's some there's something there's something that's bundled with it that makes it worth it. So I'd say like in addition to like getting the experience, you will be getting some like pretty pretty nice swag as well. Yeah, I think they're doing also raffles and such, and I think maybe some competitions. I could be wrong on that, but I really do I am interested in wanting to go. 
Um, but I still am at work at that time frame, and, and it's kind of closing in the year for me. But um, maybe if it's still available the next couple of weeks, I might change my mind and consider going. I don't know. Just <clears throat> like, half off. Like that one, camera guy? Don't, if it was, if don't, it was don't half don't. off. <laughs> I like I sign up. And as they see that email, they're like, nope, no, I'm sorry, ribbon barred full. We can no longer take any more people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they're going to tie you up in a forest and just leave you there. <laughs> I, the weather is getting a little bit warmer, okay, heading into May. It's maybe slightly warmer. Um, might be a little room for concern, and obviously because they'll probably announce the A7 III at that location, <laughs> the A7S III at that point. So, uh, of course, it'd be some room for concern for having uh, myself there. So Yeah. That one camera guy? Um, no. <laughs> Man. <laughs> He's just there to stir up some trouble. Let's not invite him. All right. Okay. Yeah, those of you in the chat, would you be interested in attending this uh, Sony Alpha Condo trip 2.0? You want grand. you want the uh, you want the uh, folks to also start queuing up some Q and A's? Yeah, for sure, man. While, um, while we're, we're going to wrap up. Yep, we got one last uh, quick topic to mention, really quick about Adobe Lightroom. If you have any questions for uh, directly me and Jason Vaughn, go ahead and start posting them now. Uh, we're going to try to finish up the show in the next eight minutes or so. Um, cause I'd like to get home soon, very, very soon. All right. So moving on to our last topic, Adobe is apparently going to have an update very soon. And these are some of the basic notes that are posted about it. Faster import and preview generation, faster walking of images in the loop view, faster rendering of adjustments in develop, faster batch merge operations of HDR photos and panoramic photos, faster exports that they say. And I think this came from Petapixel potentially, uh, mentioning that 100 raw file exports took 36 seconds versus 102 seconds. So they are saying there's going to be some improvements there, although they said th these improvements were going to happen in the last release, but it just wasn't there. So Adobe is trying to go ahead and fix those issues. They are saying this update is now geared towards more multi-core machines. So if you're rocking four, eight core, um, and you have more memory in your system, you're definitely going to see a benefit. Now, that is... Uh, we'll see if that happens or not. My Lightroom is still very much slow. So I always, like I said last time, I use Phone Mechanic. And I kind of mix that with Lightroom to get the job done. But I uh, I know most of you are probably just rocking Capture One at this point. So, Jason Vong, don't know if you have anything else to say about that other than there you go. There you go. <laughs> For those of you that didn't know. All right. I'm to Brown. Thank you for the $20. You get 100 more of these, and you can go to the Conto trip. <laughs> well, let's see here. Oh. Well, let's see here. Um, you can, yeah. I mean, like, how many more live shows can we do before that? <laughs> <laughs> Daily live shows. Here we go. Nothing we'll to sponsor, talk about. We're, we're gonna... sponsoring Danny out to Kando. Oh my gosh, condo trip. I'll be the last one I ever heard of here from him again. That, remi that reminds us that Jason Vong and I are going to be at WPPI. Just a quick reminder on that. It's coming soon. Yep, December 26th to the 28th. So Danny and I will be there. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You said December. You mean February. February. Shoot, my bad. February. <laughs> yeah. I'm living in the future, dude. I'm living in the future. <laughs> yeah, we got to yeah, watch so out for that one. So Danny and I will be there. Yeah. Hopefully we'll we'll be alive afterward too. But yeah, anyways. Of course, for the A7 III announcement, of course, right? Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Let's see. All right. Let's see what questions we've got. Evolution so, of me. Yeah, huh? Q&A, best landscape focal length. Man, I do not... See, this is why I want to go to the condo trip because there's folks that do like astro landscape. I actually just want to go ahead and interact with these people and get some feedback. So, um, I think, I mean, like people generally would say, like, what wide 16 and stuff, but you can do you can shoot uh, with a, a telephoto lens with a yeah, with landscape absolutely. because sometimes sometimes you want to be able to just crop into the area you want for your landscape photo, so it's not. Uh, having a wide lens is great, but also having a telephoto zoom lens is also very um, important too. So yeah. it's kind of a tough call. I, I don't think there's one answer. That's basically what I what I've understood about. Landscape there's no photos. there's no best one. It's just like your personal preference. I think for me, when I was like shooting out of the helicopter, 
I was using a telephoto lens and I got some amazing results for the telephoto lens. But some people would say, like, yeah, I, they would rather shoot with a wide angle lens. Just depends on your style. All right. Q Thomas, Q&A, is the EOS HD color profile worth getting? I think that's like $10 purchase. It's a $30 um, purchase. Actually. Oh, $30. Okay, take that back. I, I mean, if I you want that Canon color, it's worth it. Yeah. <laughs> Riddell Photo at Tag the Shooter Photography didn't get to my serial. Uh, Riddell <laughs> with the <laughs> I mean, Just Riddell, do you, do you want yours affected by it? I don't think you do. I mean, I'll, unless well, we, you send it in and it give you a brand spanking new A9, that'd be pretty sweet, right? Yeah. Damon Hart says, I'm thinking about getting the 7200. I would use it on the 6500. Would possibly use it for hiking and some other stuff. Is the 2.8 that much better than the F4? The F4 is still pretty damn sharp. Um, if you're looking for something lighter, go for the F4. If you need that 2.8 aperture, go for the 2.8. But honestly, if you you can still get some pretty sweet bokeh with the 7200 F4 if you just zoom into like 135 or 200. I think if you're dealing with daytime stuff, the F4 is fine. It's great. And yeah. you're hiking, and an F4 is going to be way lighter than that F2.8 to deal with, uh, Damon Hart. I, and also, with the Alpha 6500, the balance, putting a 7200 F2.8 is a bit offsetting on the weight. Yeah. Um, having a 7200 F4 is going to be a little bit easier to wield. So if it was in my case, and I knew most of the stuff I was shooting was the daytime, this, the F4 is fine. I think yeah, it's fine. Absolutely. Zoom Chris. What's up, Zoom Chris? How's it going, man? All right. Dave Sincere, I rock with Capture One and loving it. Nice. Uh, the 13th level says, where are you guys going to be? The Sony booth? Yeah, you'll probably see us at the Sony booth. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, it's happening at the Mandalay Bay this year. So we're likely just going to be in, at the convention. So you can't miss us. Yeah, if you're going to be there, um, yeah, hit it's us up or whatever. If it's, I don't know if the size changed or anything, but WPPI is relatively small, so you'll probably you'll probably see us. Okay, yeah, just look for for us there. Just look for <laughs> a tall Asian guy and a short Asian guy. <laughs> I think they recognize you more, Jason, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, every time they see Danny, they're like, "Oh my God, you're taller than." <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Chris Barr, Q and A. Jason, are you doing a video on the new Godox Flashpoint Six Hundred Pro, or what are your thoughts? I am not. I I do want them to send it to me, but I have a lot of stuff that I still need to get to for review, so it may not happen for a while. If I do end up getting one, we'll just leave that I, to our home in Francisco. I'm like sure. financially, I'm not going to pick one up, but if I can get them to send it to me, I would love to do a review on it. But as of right now, I'm I'm too backed up with a lot of stuff, so. There you go. I'm I'm still happy with mine. I got two Godox 600, so I'm gonna roll with that. Yeah, for a while. two. Let's yeah. put it together. Let's 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 this summer. Let's get a studio, and let's just get three of those, and we'll have a studio portrait lighting. <laughs> I'm serious, man. I'm serious. All right, sounds good. Um, WM Warrior 713 Q and A. How is the autofocus and I autofocus on the A7R3 with Tamron EF glass? That sounds like a brotographer question. Brotographer, you in here? Help us out. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't have you a know, camera. A, a lot of people have been requesting or like asking for it. I'm just thinking maybe I should just rent one. Just yeah. Just go, to lens, go to lensrental.com and go ahead and rent. Not drop sponsored, some, by the way. Drop some of that super chat donation. We'll have some money to rent it out. Thanks, guys. Much appreciated. Send, send it for Jason because I've been lagging too much. Send, send it to Danny so we can, so we can start. <laughs> Just wait till this week, man. I got, I am way too busy right now. Okay. All right. Um, well, Carrie Fauzi is asking, Jason, how is your A7R3 after it fell down? How's it going? Uh, it's great. Everything is fine. Um, if you watch my last video, I, I was, I would say I went to details, but I didn't, I really didn't. It's fine. It's working great. Nothing, nothing is wrong with it. The only, <laughs> the only casualty was the HDMI cord, but. That's just the oh, cord, yeah, yeah. not not the camera, so it's fine. I was thinking you're gonna say like, oh yeah, the the, the sensors like hanging out from the from the stereo right here. Yeah. I just bought another A seven R three, you know, NBD. 
Oh, let's see. Q&A, don't you think that was a lot of serial numbers for, uh, seems like, a lot of cameras? Yes, Tag the Shooter. When I looked at the serial number setup, I was like, there's way too many. But I'm guessing they, they, they skip numbers, you know? But that was a lot of numbers. Um, yeah. Zoom Chris says, WPPI is small. In what terms? Is it huge? Hard to see people? Um, I guess small in comparison to a lot of the conventions that Danny and I have been. And like Photo Plus, NAB? Or, um, yeah, like NAB and CS is just it. gargantuan. And for me, WPPI was pretty small i mean i could be remembering it wrong but yeah i mean well it's not it's not an issue so stick around the uh instagram stories like we did in new york and we'll likely we'll just meet up right in front of the entrance if we if we if you were to have a meetup <laughs> and we, we just keep to, it simple we have to do a live show though on uh when yeah. we go to for wppi so we'll have a live show there and um we should do like a live show with some guests it will be there. potato quality just so you guys are Oh, I mean, it's probably going to be terrible. Um, we'll see. We'll see what we can do. Potato podcast. <laughs> Jim Penn's asking, the cost of registering for WPPI, I think it's still free. Yeah, double check on that, though. No. Um, just type in WPPI 2018 free code or something, and it should be free. If it's, not, it'd be like 20, 30 bucks. Yeah, it's just finding the place to stay is the issue, um, unless you have a place you can go to. Um, uh, let's see here. Dave Sincere, thank you for the five dollars. Says Danny, I had to show some love. Thanks for all you do in your review vids. You're super serious. The Monday live shows you let loose, you are hilarious. Dave Sincere, thank you so much. That might just be what I need to encourage me to make some more videos. I've been wanting to do kind of go back to the tutorial stuff. Um, I'm not feeling the reviews. I was actually filming some vlog stuff because I was like, man, I haven't made a video. I went and shot basketball, I went and shot some soccer. I was like recording on my phone, and I just I don't know what it is. I just kind of get sidetracked and I just don't feel it's good enough. And I got to stop thinking like that. Damn, Jason. All right. Anyway. That's yeah, just same. Talking. <laughs> All right. Wait, wait. There, Chris Barr says, Danny, I missed the backyard lens review. <laughs> that That is a series, man. That is a series right there. The oh, backyard lens gosh. review. It got, it was tough because I was, do, I, I was stuck in the summer. I was just wanted to make some quick videos. And there was just not much to shoot in the backyard, but I mean, it got the job done. <laughs> it was it was good. Um, so yeah, it, it might make a comeback close to the summertime. So you will definitely see backyard reviews again. So yeah, Michael Miranda says a nice part of the recall. Okay, we're gonna finish up here in like two minutes. Um, back focus 11 says, have you guys been experiencing a misfire problem with the Godox X1S and the A7R3? Uh, Jason, thoughts on that? Mm -mm, not, I have not yet. I, I, I feel like I have with this, with the A7R3. Um, maybe, maybe. I feel like I've had some slight issues with it. I, I don't recall with this thing, though. I don't know about the other thing. Up oh, WM Warriors dropping that five dollars oh, for Danny shit. to make that Tamron video. Oh, Tamron video or the condo yes. shit? Which one is it? Which one is it? Uh, <laughs> Up for interpretation. Uh, well, thank you, WM Warriors. Thank you so much. Hunter Brown's asking about shooting basketball outdoors. It's been overcast like crazy here, and I could use your help. Man, I, I I use the 7200 with uh, with my A9 or the A7R3. Love that combo for for shooting basketball, man. It's and what's crazy when I was shooting basketball, I don't even use the EVF anymore, man. You know, people were, I know people joked about Jason Lanier back then, but I don't even use this as much. I use this. I use this all the time. I don't know. I'm the Brown. I'll have to do some video on the, the basketball stuff later on. Definitely got to. Season's almost over here at the high school. Folks, it's going to do it for us this evening. Thank you for joining us on our Monday live show. Those of you that have caught it towards the end, I am going to post some show notes. Maybe in the next few hours, i got to drive home. It's another 30 minutes. Um, Jason Bong, thanks again for joining, uh, coming on board again on this Monday live show. Uh, anything you want to mention before we head out today? Nah, I think that's it. New video dropping soon. Oh, man, Jason's making me look so bad. Damn it. Okay. 
All right. Folks, that's going to do it for us. Uh, once again, thank you for joining us for our Monday live show. And you will, we'll catch you next week on Jason Bong's channel. Make sure you're subscribed and checking him out there. And peace. Peace.